Hi, I'm Missy with Little Green Bean. Today I'm gonna to show you how to assemble your farmer's market stand. This is the basic stand. You're gonna assemble this once and then the whole thing will be put together. But then there's going to be pieces that are removable, such as the canopy that you can paint and get a different one every month that you can change out. But the stand itself will stay the same. The only part that comes off once this is done is the backside. Um, and that's to allow you to change out your embroidery. So we're gonna get to we're gonna get going and we're gonna get all the pieces painted, put together, and then I'm gonna show you how to assemble it. So included in each kit is going to be the pieces that you need for the stand, which include the base that it stands up in. You're gonna get the back piece with the magnets already assembled. You're going to get the middle piece. Again, magnets are already inside. There's three pieces that make up the main stand. This is the front piece. You can tell because the magnets are on the awning. Um, and then you're going to get a plain unfinished stand front, the canopy. You're also going to get the little front piece of the stand. It just glues on right here. They're separate so you can paint them, finish them any way that you would like. Then, so, all right, we're gonna get this all assembled. So I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm working on here. And we're gonna put together our farm market stands. Now we're gonna do some painting. I like to use two different size brushes, a skinny one for the edges and then a wider one to fill in the middles. You're most likely gonna need at least two coats of paint for each color, especially if you use a lighter color. Now I did add a layer of primer before I started painting and then I still needed to do two coats of each paint color. It just gives it a nice smooth finished look. I'm also using a pin and that is what I use to clean out the grooves after I paint over them you're going to get a little bit of paint in there so just use a pin drag it along the groove and then wipe it off to clean up any excess now once you're done painting you set this aside let it dry before you do the second coat and make sure everything looks good and you're happy with the end result next we're going to place our sticker on the backer to make the little sign, you just simply peel it off, stick it on the sign, make sure it's adhered well. And then you also received two Velcro dots in your kit. You wanna stick the Velcro dots together, peel off one side of the protective backing and stick that to the center of your sign on the back side, and then just set it aside until we're ready to put it on the kit. But leave that protective backer on there so that you don't accidentally stick it to something you shouldn't. All right, here's a little tip for you. When you're painting things that are really tiny, like the stems of these pumpkins, use some masking tape on your work surface to stick them to. That way you don't have to hold them and they won't move around while you're painting them. So we're gonna paint the stems and then both of the pumpkins using a similar technique to how we painted the canopy um, as far as the pin goes to clean out the grooves. Otherwise, just give them a coat of paint, whatever color you want. Now, if you are using a lighter color paint, I would recommend sanding them first. We're gonna sand the other one because we're gonna paint it aqua. You That burn mark that you see from them being cut out with our laser, that does tend to come through a little bit sometimes, depending on how many coats of paint that you use. So I'm gonna give this one a little sand really quick, um, just with some light grit sandpaper. You can easily sand off those edges so that the burn mark won't come through. Now we're gonna paint this one. Make sure to clean out your grooves as you go with a pin. It's better to do that when the paint is still wet. Um, and then set these aside, let them dry, and come back and do a second coat. Next up, we're gonna use this dark finishing wax to finish the front of our stand. I personally like the look of the wax better than a stain on this type of wood. So I use just a, just a rag, a torn up t-shirt, whatever you happen to have, and then apply the wax up and down all over the stand. Now you're gonna see some dark and light spots. So when that happens, I just go back over it with a little bit more wax until you get the look that you want. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. So just keep adding it, wiping it off, and then we're gonna sand it once it all dries, which doesn't take long. I'm gonna paint the ledge just simply using a black color for a nice contrast on the front of the stand. 
Now that all the paint is dry, we are gonna use a sanding sponge and we are gonna sand this slightly to distress the edges and give it really a more vintage look. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. If you don't like the distress look, you can simply skip this step. I'm choosing to sand all the pieces, including the pumpkins and the ledge for the front of the stand. And then we're gonna sand the finishing wax just to tone down the look of that wax once it's all done. Um, you can see it gets significantly lighter and then I sand a little bit harder on the edges. Assemble. Now this is the backer piece. This that goes on it next has coordinating magnets. Now, you guys, these get a little jumpy. So, because they're strong magnets, so just be careful when you're attaching, make sure that you're holding onto the edges and your fingers are not underneath. So this is simply going to magnetize to the back. You don't have to do anything here because you want to be able to remove that backer every month to change out your embroidery. So we're not, we're just going to set that backer aside while we're gluing because we don't want to accidentally get any glue on this piece. So this piece is the middle. This piece is the front. Now we want to glue these together. One thing I want you to notice it's longer on the bottom. There is this piece here that fits in the groove of your stand. So make sure that when you line these up and you glue them, you're lining up the awning top and you're lining up the middle, these little tabbies here, um, and you're lining up the frame. That's what you wanna look at. Let this overhang here. So we're gonna put our cover on our glue. All you do is twist it on and it automatically will open for you. Use this glue sparingly. You do not need a lot. So we're gonna take the middle piece and we're gonna just dab some drops of glue here around your edge, not too close to the edge. You don't want it to seep out. You don't need a lot, but these two are gonna stay together permanently here. So we're gonna go around the window. Um, we're gonna go along this bottom edge, but you remember we wanna keep this bottom clean. So just a couple dots here and there. We're gonna go along this top edge too. Now you do have about 30 seconds before it dries, so you have a little bit of drying time. Make sure when you glue this down, your magnets are facing up, okay? Now lay it down. You've got some time before it sets up and dries. Just make sure it all matches up. Use your hand as a guide. You can kind of slide it along here. I can feel with my thumb and my finger that it is smooth along the top. It is smooth on the inside. Make sure your edges line up and then just let it be. Let it sit for a minute while it dries, okay? So we're gonna just slide that over and set that aside while that piece is drying. And after you move it, again, make sure everything is lining up. Okay, then we're gonna take the front of the stand and the, the, um, the ledge piece. We're gonna glue the ledge onto the front. We're gonna just put a couple of drops along this ledge this is a gel-based super glue. Works really well and it's not runny. So now you're gonna just flip that over. Now have a paper towel or a wet cloth handy in case you get some on your fingers or if you have excess seeping out. And again, we're matching up these little notches. You're also matching up this edge right here. So go ahead, press down in the middle, making sure it's grabbing. It's nice and secure. And again, you wanna just let those pieces dry. Once everything is dry, and I didn't have any seepage here, so we're gonna glue this front on right there. So I'm gonna just try to see if I can move this. It's wiggling a little bit. So I want you to wait until it's totally dry. I'm gonna be daring and I'm gonna just go for it. So again, little drops of glue and if this one runs out, you've got another thing. That's why we're sending two just in case. Okay, I've gotten about all I can get out of there. So you just open up your other one. You don't wanna start gluing until you're really ready to glue everything because you don't wanna leave these just laying open. So a couple dabs all the way around the front. Might do a couple in the middle. Now you're gonna line up your stand again, line up the notches, line up your bottom 
I'm gonna put the awning on here. Oh, I went too high with the glue. Now, I'm glad I caught that. You can just wipe it off if you did. One thing I would recommend doing, lay your frame on there first and draw a little line so you know. Now, one thing you're gonna notice when you do this is your inside edge is kind of overhanging the window. That was intended, that was done intentionally. So um, this outer piece has a little bit, like an eighth of an inch overhang um, that kind of covers up the frame. That way you don't see the edge of your embroidery work. Okay, so that's lining up really nice. I'm just gonna put the awning on here just to make sure everything fits nice and flush and that your um, the arms of the front here line up under the awning. Everything is looking really good. Okay, so that's, again, remember the awning is removable, but you don't ever have to change it out if you don't want to. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. And while that is drying, we're gonna glue, because we're working on the fall one right now. If you did get the um, flower one, you don't need to glue anything with the, um, the watering can. Okay, so what I did, I showed you when I was painting, is I just took some masking tape and then I stuck the small pieces onto the tape. It helps to um, hold them in place while you paint. So again, with the pumpkin, you don't need a lot of glue, just little bits, little bit on the stem. Okay, then what you're gonna do is lay, your, I would do, I would start with the pumpkin Get them on there, line up your bottom because you want these to stand on their own. And put your tops on. Making sure all your edges and everything line up and it looks good. Okay. So again, set that aside, let it dry. For the base, I would recommend a light stain or paint, whichever you prefer. Just make sure you, if you paint it, you don't get any in the groove. It, if you do, just clean it out. That way your piece will always fit in and out of there nicely. Um, I used a stain called Early American, a very light coat on here. You can also use the wax that we showed on the front of the farmer's market stand. Now we did the, we did use wax because Wax on MDF gives more of a faux stain look. If I were to use stain on the MDF, which is the type of wood that it is, it absorbs too deeply. It doesn't look right. I, I don't personally love the look. But the stand, the base part, is pine. So this absorbs stain beautifully. So if you want to stain this, you certainly can. But you could also use the wax and get a very similar look. Or like I said, you could paint it, whichever you prefer. Next, while everything is drying, we are going to frame our embroidery. So the foam core that came with your embroidery kit is what we're gonna use to frame this around. You're gonna use some masking tape on the back to secure it. Now the reason there was that little bit of overhang from the front piece here is that is what covers up your edges and it holds everything in place and keeps it in there nicely. And then we just put the back on. So I'm gonna show you how to mount that on your foam board. So you're gonna want to press your embroidery first. Make sure everything looks good, that you love it, right? Okay, then you take your foam board. We're gonna put the embroidery face down. Now you want the bottom edge to be like, so it looks like everything is sitting on the edge of your the farm stand, right? So you're gonna line up the foam board as straight as you can with that bottom edge. We're not doing anything permanent right now. We are just putting in some stick pins to hold it in place. And then we're gonna check. If this process, for me, involves a lot of checking to make sure it looks good before we go any further. So push those stick pins in. Don't worry about it being all the way in. Then I want you to turn, or, turn it over and do the same at the top. But I can't find my pins. Oh, here they are. And I like to use the straight pins with like this, that small little pin head. You don't want to use pins that have that ball on the top, like these. Yeah, butterfingers today. Okay, you don't want to use this ball. 
the ball will get in your way. So you have to use, for this part, you have to use pins that are flat, okay? All right, so then put three in at the top as well. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right now, right? Now we're gonna just see how things are starting to line up. Don't even worry about the sides yet. You're just gonna lay that on top and make sure, like you can kind of push it in. What you're looking for here is to make sure everything looks straight and that your items on the bottom are lined up so it definitely looks like they're sitting on the cart. So make sure you stand it up and you look at it the way you'd be looking at it if it was up on a shelf. The one thing I see is this side needs to come down just a little bit. So we're gonna take our pins out Set them aside. And we're only gonna take out this one here. We're gonna leave these other two because we just want to adjust that slightly. Just pull on it. Now I can see that this side is sitting right on that edge, which is what we wanted. So I'm gonna put a pin back in to secure it. Make sure I don't have any wrinkles and now we'll put the top pins back in. And just make sure you put your pins straight down so that they don't come out the front or the back. We're gonna test this again. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, I love how that looks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pin down. Actually, first I'm going to take my masking tape and I'm gonna just tape the edges. You can trim off more excess if you want to. Um, you'll never need the excess that's on here for anything again. Um, the reason there's so much is for it to be able to fit inside your hoop while you're embroidering. So go ahead, tape down the sides. You can also use a basting adhesive on your foam board if you want to. That may help eliminate some wrinkles. If you just spray a basting adhesive on the front and then smooth it all out, and stick it down. Um, I haven't had any issues with wrinkles, but that will work if it's something you're concerned about. All right, now we're gonna just fold in the corner. You don't want a lot of bulk in there, and you don't have to worry about it being super neat because you're not going to see the back and you're not gonna see those sides. So go ahead and tape that down. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. So again here, just kind of fold in your corners like that. Let the bulk be on the back side. You just don't want too much bulk on the edges. Tape it all down. Now I will look, make sure everything looks smooth. You can add more pins to hold it in place along the top and the bottom if you would like to. And then it is ready to frame. Make sure your frame is completely dry and that everything, the glue is dry, the paint is dry. You don't wanna risk getting anything that's gonna ruin your work. So once you pop it in the frame, then you, let me show you this the right in the right frame. Okay, so now grab your frame and we're gonna pop this in. Make sure everything is dry. You don't wanna risk there being wet glue or wet paint or anything. So slide it inside there. And this is where it's important to make sure your pin heads are pushed in far enough so that it goes right in. Now we're gonna take the backer piece, the magnets face up, be careful here so you don't let it pinch you. It kind of just grabs and then you line it up. So now the back piece is on there. It's holding everything all inside. And then we're gonna put the awning on. Oh gosh, 
Isn't that fun? Okay, next up, we've got our sign. So when we put the Velcro on, we left the two pieces of Velcro together and we left the sticky bat or the protective cover on the sticky. Now what we're gonna do is center this right in the middle or wherever you wanna put it on your stand. You've already got your sticker on there. Okay, now it's ready to go in the base and we'll add the pumpkins. We're just gonna simply put it in the stand. It easily just comes in and out. And then we're gonna add our pumpkins. All right, I hope you enjoyed making this farm stand with me. I absolutely love these kits. I'm so glad you guys are loving them as well. I never put the backer on, but it simply goes on just like that. So keep in mind, the awning is then the only piece that changes on the stand every month. The back is removable, so you can change out the embroidery. The awning is an option. If you want to change it, you can. You certainly don't have to. And then every month we'll have coordinating pieces that match what that month's embroidery theme is and a coordinating sign. So thank you for following along. If you have any questions, you can send us a message on Instagram or you can shoot us an email at thelittlegreenbean44 at gmail.com. And everything can be found on our website, which is The Little Green Bean. Thank you so much for watching our video today and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can follow along for more tips, tricks, and tutorials.